Hi, this is Ali Arango of LittleGuyCGI.com, and I don't want to quite call this a tutorial. What I would like to do is show you just a few things that I found out that you could do with a storyboard template and the grease pencil inside of Blender 2.76b. So let's get started. Okay, if this is your first time in Blender, I recommend you go to File, User Preferences, go to Input, and then choose Select with left click. Blender's default select is with right click, and this may confuse you if you're coming from Adobe or other 3D programs. Also, while you're in here, click on Add-ons, put a check mark next to uh, 3D View, colon uh, 3D Navigation, and then just scroll down. And you want to make sure you have a check mark next to here. Uh, and this is import, you know, dash export colon import images as planes. Okay, if you look to your left, you'll see a thing that looks like it says Navi right here. If you click that, that's your navigation uh, tab. You can use this navigation tab to easily adjust your view while you're inside of Blender. Okay, the first thing you want to do is with your cube selected, you're going to press X to bring up your delete menu, then select delete. You're then going to select your camera and then you're going to press and hold alt and then press G. Okay, now with the camera still selected, you're going to hold alt, then press R. Um, then you're going to press R, then X, and then 9, 0. And then left click to lock in and that just rotated the camera on the x-axis to go, you know, to point straight forward. Okay, with that done, you're just going to take your manipulator and push the camera straight back. Okay, what you see here is Blender's 3D cursor. In Blender, when you bring objects in, uh, wherever the 3D cursor is at is where the objects tend to come in to Blender at. Okay, what I want to uh, tell you how to do now is I want to show you how to... Uh, bring in a storyboard template. Now you can just Google and you know look for a generic storyboard template or you can use the little guy CGI storyboard template. And to get that, I'll put a link in the description where you can just click the link and download that. Okay, so make sure you know where your storyboard uh, template is at. You're then gonna press and hold shift and press A. This brings up our add to menu. You're gonna select mesh. And then in the mesh menu, you're going to scroll all the way down near the bottom. You're then going to select images as planes. You're going to look immediately over to your left and you're going to see some options uh, that you want to deal with before you bring an actual image in. And what you want to do is select right here where it says shadeless. So now that you have that done, what you want to do is actually look for your image. So I'm going to select a desktop for myself, go to this folder I made up called storyboards, select here, and then select uh, my storyboard template right here. If you want to be able to see the actual images uh, that are in your file folders, you can click here and then you can actually, you know, see what you're looking at. You're then going to select import images as planes. Okay, here is the image that was just brought in. So with that image selected, uh, I'm going to press R to rotate on the X axis and then 9, 0, and then left click to lock in. Okay, what you're looking at here is the default workspace for Blender. If you click right here, there's other workspaces that just assist you as you do various work. For now, we want to click the uh, animation workspace. Okay, and this is the uh, layout for the animation workspace. And now that we're in here, what I want you to do is press the... Uh, N key to bring up the properties panel. You're going to scroll down until you see shading. You're then going to click here. You're going to select GLSL. You're then going to put a check mark next to textured solid. Okay, what you're going to do now is press the N key again to take away the properties panel. You're then going to press T to bring up this menu right here. You're going to go to navigation and then you're going to select view camera. Okay, and now you see a uh, you're seeing through the camera right here. We actually have to press the N key uh, again to bring up the properties panel and see where it says lock camera right here. Let me zoom up. So it's in the view menu. You're going to select lock camera. We'll then press N to take away the properties panel again. And then with that lock camera option, 
uh, selected. What that does is that locks the camera to our view and that allows us to roll our mouse wheel to actually zoom into uh, this image here. Okay, I'm gonna hover my mouse over this 3D viewport here. Then I'm gonna hold shift and while holding shift, press the space button. The reason why I did that is so you can see that here we have the little guy CGI storyboard uh, template right here. Okay, and what you see on here is just various information that will help you out as far as uh, working on a storyboard. So what I'm gonna do is press and hold shift and press space again, and that takes us back to this view. So what I want you to do is to zoom in and then hold shift, hold the middle mouse button. This will allow you to pan and zoom in more. I'm gonna hold shift and hold the middle mouse button to pan again. And I'm just you know, trying to get a uh, good view of the first storyboard uh, panel right here. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is hover my mouse here and I'm just gonna pull this to the side to adjust our view so we have uh, you know more room to see our first panel right here. I'm then gonna press the N key to bring up our properties panel. I'm then going to unclick where it says lock camera to view. So I'm gonna take away this check mark right here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is roll my mouse wheel to zoom in to get a better view of this panel. I'm gonna hold shift and hold the middle mouse button just to pan a little bit. Okay, now as far as the grease pencil, and you can see here are some of the options for the grease pencil right here. Uh, the grease pencil is a tool inside of Blender that allows you to help with storyboarding. Uh, within recent uh, versions of Blender, you can do full-blown animations in, uh, inside of Blender with the grease pencil. I mean, uh, I've experimented with it just recently, and it is amazing. You can basically draw in 3D. It's, it's incredible. It's amazing what the grease pencil can do. Uh, I'm not going to go over all the details of the grease pencil. I'm basically going to just show you, try to show you here quickly what you can do as far as working with an actual storyboard uh, template inside of Blender. Okay, another thing that I want to make mention of is I am sitting in front of a, a Wicom Intuos pad here. Uh, and that's, you know, recommended as far as drawing on the computer as well as drawing in Blender uh, if you have access to some kind of uh, tablet, that would definitely be the way you would want to go as far as, you know, actually trying to draw uh, inside of Blender with the uh, grease pencil. Okay, to prepare to draw with the grease pencil, uh, we can see here's the grease pencil right here. Uh, one of the things we want to do is select object because we're actually going to be drawing on the object that is this plain you know, which is basically our storyboard uh, template. Okay, what you want to do next is select new right here, and then we're going to go to this tab right here, which is the grease pencil tab. We want to put a check mark where it says continuous, continuous, I, I guess it's continuous drawing. And this just allows us to draw like we were drawing on a sheet of paper for the most part. Okay, now what you want to do is select surface right here and what this means is we will draw directly on the surface of whatever object we currently have selected or in front of us which is a storyboard uh, template right now okay I'm having issues with my Wicom tablet so I'm just going to use the mouse uh, if you were using the uh, Wicom tablet you would just most likely choose this draw option and with this draw option and the check mark here for continuously draw you would just, you know, draw, uh, you know, whatever you want it to be in this panel for your storyboard. Okay, if you're in a situation uh, like I am in and you don't have a Wicom tablet, the line option is uh, a good option because it tends to work very well with a mouse. So right here we have our layers. So what I'm going to do right here is double click here and I'm just going to name this uh, background enter to lock that in so then I'm going to select the line tool and I'm just going to click here and I left click and I'm holding down the the uh, left click button as I'm drawing so now that I have this uh, line across I'm just letting go right now and then I can you know move my mouse away around without 
be concerned as far as drawing another line. Okay, so what we're going to do now is draw some uh, perspective lines. I'm going to left click here, and then I left click, and I'm still holding down the uh, left mouse button. The line tool works extremely well for drawing uh, perspective lines. So I'm just left clicking, holding down, now letting go there. So I left click here, I hold down the left click, let go there left click hold down let go there left clicking dragging now I'll start right here and I'm just you know again holding down the left uh, mouse button so I don't let go until I have the line out to where I want it you know to be at I'm just you know continuing along few more lines in and this putting these lines in is something you would want to do with the line tool even if you did have a uh, the Wycom tablet you still would uh most likely want to use this to put your perspective lines in okay I'm just gonna put another line right here Okay, and once you have all of your perspective lines in, I'm going to press enter. Uh, what we can do is go to this layer right here, and then we can lower down the opacity for the stroke, which is uh, very cool. Okay, now what we're going to do now is we're going to draw some buildings in here. Uh, as far as laying out the perspective lines, a line tool works very well. As far as drawing the buildings out, uh, I recommend you move on to the... Uh, polygon tool uh, the reason being is that with the line tool you won't be able to put uh, a fill behind your lines however with the polygon tool it still makes polygons tool makes uh, working with the mouse fairly easy and you have the you know the additional benefit of you know being able to fill the work that you're working on so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to first make a new layer we're gonna double click here we're gonna name this buildings press enter and then going to go to the stroke we're gonna take this up we'll select like a bluish color here we'll go to the fill same thing and then we'll select the polygon tool here and then we'll start drawing in our uh, building line so I'm gonna left click here oops control Z left click and then when I left click again, you can see it draws the line right there. Uh, I'll left click here, take this down to about here, left click up here, then select right there. Uh, left click here. Left click about there, bring this down to about here. Left click again here. Now I'm going to press enter to get out of that. And then what I'm going to do is see where it says uh, fill. Right here is the opacity. I'm going to take this opacity up. And now you can see, you know, we have a, a background uh, or a fill, you know, placed around what the work we did with the polygon tool. Okay, now one thing you can do that's cool as far as, um, you know, working with your, your work right here is, suppose you sit there and you're like, yeah, this line doesn't look that straight. You know, you want to uh, adjust it. What you can do is come to enable editing and just click, and now you can move the points, you know, that, that make up your work. So I'll move that up there. I'll left click here, move this so it's straighter here, maybe take it up a little bit more. Then left click to lock that in, left click here, drag this over, left click to lock that in. You know, if I want to take this point down a little bit more, I can just drag it down, left click to lock that in. So pretty, you know, very cool actually. Uh, take this up some here, I'll left click here, drag this up a little. Maybe move it over here a little bit. Left click here.
Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Too much greater. I could tell myself not to get caught up. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the polygon tool and I'm just going to uh, left click here, left click here, left click there, left click there, and then left click here. So now I'll left click here. Mm, yeah, left click here left click here and then left click there okay <laughs> I was trying to see what you know what I was gonna do to get that color to be you know like this which is how it is right here okay what I want to do now is put like a little sidewalk thing going on right here but if I come from the perspective line here and then try to go from here. If you look, I'll run into this building right here. However, with the tools of the grease pencil, uh, we can fix that fairly easily. Now you can see right here, I have a dot selected there. So I'm just gonna press A to deselect. Now I'm gonna press and hold control and then press and hold the right mouse button. I'm gonna draw a lasso select around this whole building right here. Now I'm gonna press the G key and I can just you know grab that whole thing and move it up so I'm you know, like this which is a uh, very cool uh, so now with that done what we can do is I'm just gonna click here and I'm gonna name this uh, extra press enter to lock that in okay and as you can see with this extra layer the colors went back to the default color which is black which is fine for right here so what I'm gonna do is use the line tool so I'm gonna click there I'm gonna left click and drag right here I'm gonna let go for a second, then uh, hold the left uh, mouse button again, and come over to here, then let go. I'm gonna left click and hold again right here. Let go. I'm gonna left click and drag there. Let go, left click and drag here. I'm going to press uh, enter to get out of that. And when I say that, what I mean is the line tool. Okay, I'm going to go back to the line tool again and just do the same thing again. Left click and hold right here. Then I'm going to let go of left click, left click and hold again right here. Let go, left click hold again right here then let go then I'm gonna press enter to get out of the line tool or I guess you could say lock that in uh, so now we have like a little sidewalk area right there okay so what we're gonna do now is add a character to this so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press plus right here I made a new layer I'm gonna double click here I'm gonna name this uh, character one and press enter to lock that in i'm going to go to the stroke i'm going to take this up i'm going to select the green this color uh, then what i'm going to do is even though i have the mouse and not a wycom tablet i'm going to go to draw so i can draw a circle Oof, that thing's ugly i'm going to hit control z control z again there we go that one's not too bad I'll press enter to lock that in okay and what I'm gonna do now is for this fill I'm gonna click here I'm gonna take this up give this a greenish color I'm gonna take the opacity up for there uh, and then with that done I'm gonna go to the poly tool I'm gonna left click here and this is gonna be our body for our character right here I'm gonna press enter to temporarily lock that in okay now we made this character fairly big uh 
and that doesn't really matter because we can scale the character down so what we can do is press a to select uh, this character however because these other layers aren't locked if I press a it'll select all of our points and all of our work here so what I'm going to do is go through the layers except the current one that we're working on and you know just turn those locks on okay and now with those other layers locked what I can do is just press a to select everything here and then press s to scale and then I can just scale this right down then I can press G and just you know place our little makeshift character wherever I want I'm gonna press a again to deselect okay one of the cool things about using a storyboard template uh, along with blender along with the grease pencil is the fact that you can actually animate your uh, storyboard panels okay and we're in a good position as far as preparing for animation because we are, we're already in blenders animation workspace what you see here is there's a what's called a dope sheet right here and this just allows you to be able to easily see your keyframes we can't see anything there yet because we don't have any keyframes put in uh, this is the curve editor which lets you do more advanced work as far as uh, working with your keyframes and then this is the timeline here and basically the timeline allows us to work in time if we go backward this direction we go back in time and then forward this direction we go forward in time okay so what we're going to do now is just animate our character moving across here so what I'm going to do is make sure I'm on the correct layer which is our character layer which I am I want to make sure I have my mouse over you know this 3d viewport I'm going to press a which selected our character and what I'm going to do now is uh, move him onto the next frame now before I do that as soon as I selected this character uh, and moved it a keyframe was put in right here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press the arrow key on my keyboard and if you look here you can see that we went to frame two and if you look right there you should be able to see that there's like a little yellow line that indicates that we just put a keyframe on frame one now I'm using the arrow key to uh, move along the timeline by one frame. You can also click right here and this also will move you, you know, one frame forward or one frame back along the timeline. Okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, as we start to, you know, work, one of the things that will help us out to work is uh, we're going to put a check mark right here next to onion skinning. And onion skinning is a term in animation that basically means that as you animate a character uh, you can s basically see kind of uh, you can see an image of pretty much what you did before and that assists you as you animate okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, press G and just move the character up slightly and if you can see right here there's kinda like a little after image right there that is the onion skinning showing us what's on the frame right before this one and what's really cool is if you click here so this these are the 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 images that show you know what came before this uh, the current keyframe that we're on will be right here so we can actually set this to whatever uh, color we want so I'm gonna set uh, I'll set for the I'll set for the pass, I'll set it for green. And then for the frame that comes after the current frame that we're on, I'll just click up here and I'll set this for blue. Okay, so the motion that we're going to be doing is kind of like this, like I'm doing with the mouse, and we're kind of just having the character kind of like bob up and down as they, you know, walk along a path like a human body does. So uh, what we can do is we can just click here to go to frame 3 then press G move down click here to go to frame 4 press G move up click here to go to frame 5 press G move down and and so forth and I'll just you know keep doing this and uh, this is called you know frame by frame animation Just you know, pressing forward a keyframe, pressing G to move. I guess that blue isn't the best. I'm gonna click here and actually I'll change it to like a purple. Um, so I'm gonna press G and move this down. And what I'm trying to do is just you know give you a sense of what's uh, possible here. So just advance the timeline. 
Pressure G to move up. Advance the timeline. Press G to move down. Advance the timeline. Press G to move up. Advance the timeline. Press G to move down. Okay, and now with just those uh, keyframes put in, if we take our timeline and move back, you know, you can see as we, you know, drag the timeline, we can see our character, you know, uh, doing a slight bit of animation as it moves forward. Uh, and, you know, some of the cool things you were, you can do, like, you know, obviously this is a, an extremely uh, simple version of, quote-unquote, a character. Uh, along with, you know, just pressing G and grabbing... Uh, everything what you can do is I'm gonna press the right arrow on my keyboard and I'm gonna press G move this up and then I'm gonna press R to rotate then I'm gonna I'll use here I'll click here press G to move up press R to rotate click here G to move up slight slightly or to rotate here move up or to rotate here you move down some or to rotate here down some or to rotate here you move down or to rotate Okay, now if we take our timeline back, you know, and we turn off the uh, onion skinning, you know, we can see our little character kind of doing like a walk. Let me press A to deselect. And then he, you know, comes to the end of his walk and does a little flip there and lands. Okay, and as you work on the storyboard, suppose you want, suppose you want to go back to frame one, you could take uh, your character and you could add another layer and you could. You know, put a detailed face, zoom in, have a detailed face on your character. You could put you know, arms and legs on. You could put a little uniform on. Then what you could do is use the previous layer as a guide as you had your, uh, you know, your more detailed uh, drawings uh, work along with your, you know, uh, simplified uh, uh, character like we have here. Okay, other, other things you could do fairly easily is if you wanted to have your character uh, walk towards the camera you could just scale your character up and have the character do that. If you look right here, you can see that our uh, the work we did as far as animation is about 22 frames long, and we're set for 24 frames per second as far as you know how this uh, would play out as a video. Suppose you wanted to have this be uh, two seconds long, which would be 48 seconds. What you could do to do that is you would just hover your mouse here. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel and see where it says dope sheet here. You would click here and then change this to grease pencil. If I hover my mouse here and then press the home key on the keyboard, these are all of the frames that we uh, put in, all the keyframes that we put in that gave us, you know, that animation that we have so far. Okay, and with all these keyframes showing here, what I can do is. I can make sure that my timeline indicator is on frame one, which it is. I can look around where I want the timeline to be, which is a little bit past right here. Then what I can do is press A to select all of the keyframes. And with my mouse here, I can press S to scale. And then what happens is the keyframes will scale from where the timeline indicator is at. So I'm just looking, waiting for it to get past. And then I'm just going to a little bit more left click right there to lock that in. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, make sure I'm on the character layer. I'm actually going to click here and change this stroke so that it's black, just so it's easier to see what's going on here. But now when I, uh, I'm going to hover my mouse here, I'm going to press uh, the right, uh, I'm going to right click right here to bring my timeline indicator here. Then I'm going to press E so that the, the timeline only goes up to, to 51, but when I click, uh, play now you can see there's our little you know animation playing out so it's fairly easy to take the keyframes that you put in and scale them to be what you need them to be there are a lot of uh, possibilities that you can uh, can do 
uh, you know, using a storyboard template uh, and a grease pencil. I mean, the grease, grease pencil can do all kinds of stuff right here. You know, I pretty much was just focused on this template. I just think it's amazing that you can, uh, you know, use this on a template because we've been focused on this uh, panel for a while now. However, if I roll the mouse wheel back and I turn to the side, you can see we're on a storyboard. Uh, and I mean, it looks just like a storyboard. However, we can, you know, zoom in a little bit just for uh, so we can see better and select play. And yet we can see our animation, you know, playing out there. And you could, uh, I mean, you can have as much like as much detail as you want uh, as you work on this. You could, you know, put in something very simple here, then, you know, come back and then, you know, add more detail. Something else you should be aware of is this. Let me click this to uh, uh, press polls or to pause the play. Uh, you can also, as far as these fill lines and stroke lines, these can be animated. So suppose, you know, we go back and uh, we go to our buildings right here. I'm gonna unlock this layer. What we can do is actually take these down like this, right? And then I can hover my mouse here, press I, and I'll press uh, I here. And then what I can do is move the timeline. And once I get to about halfway, what I can do is you know, take this all the way up, take this part of the way up, hover my mouse here, press I, then press I here as well. So now when I go back and I hit play again, you know, you can see those buildings fading in for whatever reason you, you know, you might want to uh, do that for, you know, as well as, you know, you could do the same thing as, uh, for the perspective lines also. Okay, guys, that's it for the video. I just wanted to share with you some of my thoughts as far as using a storyboard template inside of Blender along with the grease pencil. Uh, for all of those of you out there who like the videos on this channel and we share them, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, Larry Nestor, I saw that you donated to this channel and I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Larry. Uh, donations like yours just allow me to be able to justify uh, making more videos uh, for this channel. Uh, for anybody else out there who would like to donate, if you look to your, the upper right hand corner, uh, you can click on the I and it'll lead you to a place where you can uh, leave a donation of any amount, which will be greatly appreciated. Uh, for all of those of you out there who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel and you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.